So hi everybody, it's been a while since I've done any YouTube video. But I figured since spring is coming and the greenhouse is pretty full, <laughs> might as well get back into the habit of doing those videos. Um, so I'm just going to give you guys a tour of the greenhouse and what's going on right now. So over here I got some tropical bulbs and I'm using air quotes because not all of them are bulbs. I think there's only one that's a real bulb and that's a uh, lily. And I guess I could probably do a video on the difference between bulbs, quorums, and rhizomes on every day. But all these guys are pretty much what they would term summer summer bulbs, so they like it hot. Um, I wanted to get them a head start so that they grow pretty strong. And then when I plant them, they're probably going to come back the next year. Because they got the um, extra time to build up reserves. So right here I have a lily. Sorry for the light. It is Lilium Lassiflorium Floropana. We used to have some of these when we first moved into this house, but my dog ate them all. This one is actually a perennial. It's Dicentra Lux Luxin Lux Luxurant. <laughs> And it makes a really good shade, shady perennial. And I'm going to move it down because if you look right there, it's burning at the tips. So like I said, shade perennial <laughs> shouldn't be up in there in the sun. This is a Dahlia, nothing yet. And this was the one that was like the worst off of all the ones I bought. I bought them at Home Depot. Um, so fingers crossed it'll come up. It just needs a little bit more heat. Over here, we've got two different types of Ganas. Gana Black Knight and Gana... Wyoming. I really like the purple leaf ganas. And then right here we have a couple pots of Gladiolus Violent King. I It was in a bag of 30. Um, I put them in these pots because I'm planning on actually planting them out like in clumps throughout the area. So it kind of looks a little bit more natural. And then again, I'm giving them a head start. Below that, we have this tray, this tray, and then there's another one down there. Oh, and this one. These are all winter, well, let me say cool season annuals. So annuals could be divided into two groups. We have cool season annuals, which are like cooler temperatures. They germinate in fall, overwinter through the winter, and then flower in the spring. And then set seat before summer, and then repeat. Uh... Tender annuals or hot season annuals is like how the name says. They prefer uh, warmer temperatures to germinate. So that would be your zinnias, your impatiens. Well, impatiens are most of them are perennial. Uh, your cosmos. Those guys prefer higher temperatures and would germinate mid spring, flower through summer, fall, and then usually get frosted. So right here, I got a bunch of different types of California poppy. I think there's. Five different varieties here. Right here I have a new Calvin Chloe that I got from a trait. This one I'm really excited for. This is Uring Uringium. If my camera could focus, this is always an issue. Huh. Okay, it's not going to focus. But it's Uringium Miss Welman Welmont's Ghost. So Miss Welmont was a British gardener that she would go around and sprinkle the seed of that plant into other people's gardens without them knowing so that's what they would call it her ghost and then again we have a bunch of different types of cool season annuals here we centauria we got two different types we got black black magic and then i think um, blue boy we have a californian annual which i'm very excited about california is like annual heaven in terms of diversity and they have a ton a ton of cool stuff over there but this is Nemorphia maculata. And then, what else do we have that's interesting here? We got calendula, which is a European plant. Um, some people could say, wow, why wasn't my camera want to focus? Oh, there we go. Uh, calendula Oktoberfest. Um, I tried a couple calendulas. They tend to just be annuals for me, and then they'll reseat, which is what I like. Although I have heard that some of them could be perennial, it just really depends where the genetics are coming from. So apparently, calendula populations located closer to the Mediterranean are more perennial than those that are found more up north. So I think Proven Winners has two calendulas that they bred that they 
uh, grow via cuttings. And I think those guys are perennial in the warmer zones, like zone 7 and up. And then right here we have, this one's cool. This is Amni, Amni Visanaga Green Mist. It's a carrot relative. And I also have Amni Magus over here. So that's cool. First time growing those from C. We got a wallflower, Serentis Cherii. Orange Noah flowers related to broccoli. So I'm hoping it's going to attract, some people think they're, a, well, they are a pest. Uh, the white cabbage butterfly. I think they're cool. So they want to lay their eggs on it. It's cool. And then over here we have Scabiosa, my camera could focus, Scabiosa Atropurpurea Black Knight. I, I really like uh, annuals with like dark flowers. I just think they're cool. And then Lupinus Nanus, which is very similar to um, the Texas Blue Bonnet. And then over here is Lunaria annua, or the money plant. They call it the money plant because the seed pods look like... Uh, like coins and it has purple flowers and it's another member of the Br brassica family so mustards cabbages kale that type of stuff and it grows in the shade over here i have all oh, these guys are perennials for the most part and i have a couple sprouts i got one right there Woo! and that is habilizencia tameroides i don't remember which one that is there's a lot of stuff that i need to look up so that's why I'm not going to go into too much detail over everything. Just some highlights. Down here we got another tray of cool season annuals. And I see a couple things coming up. This uh, Shirley Poppy. And then right here I think I see the start of Sprout. Yeah, this is the beginning of the Sprouts. Uh, Facilia Campanulata. That's another one that's native to from California, pretty much throughout the southwest, I think, but I think most of it is in California. Nil blue flowers, honeybees, and other bees like it a lot. So that's cool. I'm excited about that. And over here, we got some plants that I grew from work, native ones. So that's agave lechuga, which is one of the plants that if you see it, then you know for sure you're in the Chihuahua Desert. They also call it the chin, chin split agave because if you get stabbed, when you're going hiking, this plant only gets up to the up around your knees in terms of height and it has a very sharp um, spike, I guess you could say, at the ends of the leaf. So yeah, not a pleasant time. This one is one of my favorites. This is Ebenopsis ebino, native throughout the Chihuahua Desert and into the Sonoran. It has large pods that are very similar to some tropical species that are called sausage trees. Um, it's a legume. Little puffs of uh, white flower, whitish yellow flowers. Very slow growing, but I'm gonna try feeding this guy with some coffee and maybe tomato fertilizer so I could get it to accelerate in growth until it reaches maybe four or five feet and then slow it down so it doesn't grow too weak. This one right here, which is just a stick, and everyone's gonna be like, what the hell? This is Unugrundia speciosa, another native, pink flowers very excited for this this is the spineless cactus um i grew a bunch of these at work but i picked this one because it looks like a guy going hey with its um limb arrangement this is a cotton plant which i'm hoping i left it outside when it got cold so i'm hoping it re-emerges from the roots this is giraffes from derbii another native yellowish white flowers this is one of my favorite native trees this is Castellaplinia mexicana. Most people are familiar with Castellaplinia perchala, which has orange, orange flowers, but this grows into a small tree, yellow flowers. Um, Bumbus and xylocopa bees love it. And <laughs> in some of the pods, it has pods which are normal for most of the family. Those pods pop explosively. It's, it's pretty cool. And then this guy, which is dormant, is. Acacia Augustiflorium, but I think I actually mislabeled this and this might actually be a mimosa of some type So I'm gonna have to double check And then over here we have a bunch of plants. I'm overwintering from Annie's annuals Which one of my favorite nurseries in the world because they just grow so many rare and unusual stuff um, We got Echiums Ascyphius, um, which one is this one? I think this one is Linifloria 
Linaria, or Linaria, or the, or the pine pine leaf milkweed because the leaves look like pines and it actually has aphids in here but they're staying on that plant this is a hispicus hispicus or hibiscus splendens it's from australia over here we have a monkey flower um, um this right here is azoria dentata yellow flower sweetly scented this right here is Prostanthia rotundiflora, which is very, um, you brush your hand against it and it smells, but it smells nice. We have uh, oak leaf hydrasia, which didn't go all the way dormant, but you can already see the new buds. This is Symphdrafters uh, ex pallidus Maria Smith. Maria Smith? <laughs> I don't know why I have to make it sound so Latin. Um, it's dormant right now, has pink flowers. And then right here, I got some more um, perennial roots to um, get a head start on. A Stevie Sunny Boy. And then a Peony. Peony, and this one is Sarah Benhart. And you can already see the growing points right there, which has me excited. And then over here, we got a bunch of seeds. This bottom tray mostly has um, bulbs from seed. This has a lot of perennials from C. Um, most of these are going to be perennials. So I got more perennials from C. More perennials from C. Even more perennials from C. And then this big guy is a... Uh, I hope that opens up all the way. Um, might not. And that's a Rechinus or a castor oil plant. Uh, Impala has nice purple leaves. It could be perennial here, but they'll probably act like a dieback shrub, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I like that. And then up here, we got a bunch of grasses, which I'm going to have to start to transplant them so that they could keep growing on. More perennials, more perennials, <laughs> even more perennials from seed. So I got a lot going on, and I still have a ton more <laughs> seeds too. Um... So, so that's why there's a bunch of empty trays up here. So these are more perennials I sowed this past weekend. And over here I got some more bulbs. So this section right here is bulbs. But they're tropical bulbs. Or they like, uh, they like more heat. So right here we got... Oh. Malaspermia ramosa. And then this one is... So if my phone could focus, and it's not. That is Sertrantis brivilliflorus, which I'm not sure is going to be hardy here. And the rest of these guys are um, more perennials. And I'm sorry about the lighting that it's so harsh in here, but it's like midday. But yeah, I'm really excited for what this spring's going to bring. And hopefully the next time I do a greenhouse tour, um, there's a lot more stuff reaching maturity or getting transplanted. And yeah, I'm really excited. I can't wait for all these things to get growing and then for me to actually be planting them in the ground, finally. So thanks for watching and see you guys soon.